So a lot of you have been asking me, Jackie, how do you hear the voice of the Lord? How do you know that it's him? And I am going to give you some of the reasons why we don't hear the voice of the Lord and uh, some of the examples of how I've heard the voice of the Lord. So I've been praying for a while, Lord, I want this platform to be for you. Speak to me and tell me what you, what videos you want me to make. Like, I don't want this to just be me. I want this to be you. And so last night, God literally spoke to me in two different ways. I was like half asleep, half awake. And this happens sometimes where I feel like the Holy Spirit's literally speaking in my ear. One of the things that the Holy Spirit does is he brings to remembrance everything that Jesus said. That's There's a verse in there that says that that's what he does. It's one of his functions. And the Holy Spirit literally was just reciting verse after verse, constructing this video that I'm making right now about hearing the voice of God and the reasons why many don't hear the voice of God. And I'm just amazed. I'm like, I could not put this stuff together. There's no way this is all God. And then uh, after God was like speaking to me a lot about the video, I had gone back to sleep. I woke up and I couldn't go back to sleep for like 10 or 15 minutes. And I remember laying there and I was feeling so discouraged about a comment that I had read yesterday. Uh, yesterday I had my baby shower and I read a comment that said, uh, Jackie just posted on Facebook, uh, you know, she with her baby bump and she just got married uh, six months ago or whatever. I got married in August, August 11th. And um, <clears throat> anyways, this comment was saying, uh, something seems fishy here. Like basically like she had sex before marriage with Lance. Now guys, when I got married with Lance, August 11th, okay, and we eloped, I got pregnant literally in September. Like so quick. We got pregnant so quick. And um, so it really was discouraging to me. And you know, I'm a human being at the end of the day, right? <clears throat> Some of these comments, it's hard to get through the comments all the time. I want to answer everybody, but it's hard because there's a lot of really mean comments. And it usually doesn't get to me, but sometimes it does. So anyways, I was laying there and I was just awake and I was so discouraged. I was like, God, you know, people were making false accusations against me. Uh, people were saying all these kinds of things about me. And... I'm literally just telling people what you want, what you have taught me. I'm literally just being obedient to share what you have, you've taught me, right? <clears throat> and then I get into this, I start feeling this fear come upon me. And it's that somebody is going to do something to harm me. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, God, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. And the audio Bible that my husband is playing all of a sudden goes into this right after I finished that last thought, venting to God about everything I'm worried about. It says this, listen to this, guys. It's crazy how God literally spoke to me through his word, through the audio Bible in that moment. It says, Matthew 10, 25 to 28. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, which is like the devil, They've called the master of the house, which is Jesus, Beelzebub. How much more will they malign those of his household? Or other translations, his servants. If, if they called Jesus like somebody that had demons and everything, how much more are they going to call his servants? You. You're following him. They're going to insult you just like they insulted him. Right? So God's touching on that and that false accusation against me. And then it says, so have no fear of them for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, right? When I give birth, people are going to see that if you add the math up, I would have been having a baby by now had I had sex before marriage, right? <clears throat> so God's saying, I will reveal everything in its time. So it says, or hidden that will not be known. When I tell you in the dark, guys, God is so amazing how he speaks. When I tell you in the dark, what I tell you in the dark, say in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. 
And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. So don't fear man, fear God. And it's saying right here, God was saying to me, the things that I'm whispering in your ear, right? Just about the video and everything that you do on your channel. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Don't fear man. Reveal it. Proclaim it on the housetops. And then he says, don't fear man. Don't fear he, he who can kill the body, but fear me alone. Because I can destroy both body and hell. A body and soul in hell. So I was just amazed by this, guys. How God had spoken to me. And there's so many different ways that God speaks to us, right? But here are some of the ways that... This, here are some of the reasons why we don't hear the voice of the Lord. We are unfaithful in the small requests, okay? We want God to speak to us. And we want to hear him clearly, right? But we're not faithful with the little things, right? So sometimes I'll be in like a conversation with somebody. And I have this thought to, you know, to share something vulnerable with them. But I can't really trust them. And God says, don't say it. Or I'm in a conversation with somebody who I can trust. But, you know, I'm going to say something that's not right or it's mean or whatever or it's insulting and God says don't say it and there's it's just a still small voice of knowing don't say it and I say it and I end up regretting it and there's a storm and the person gets angry and then we get into an argument God wants us to be faithful in the little and he will give us the much right so if you're not faithful to listen and, and obey God in the little things he asks of you in the little things he tells you to do. He will not entrust you with the greater revelations. When I would do that, God would suddenly stop giving me revelations, st suddenly stop really talking to me as often. Because he's like, you're not going to listen to me. Okay, well, you're not hearkening unto my voice. I'm not going to harass you. I'm going to give you your space. So <clears throat> the Bible says, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. If you want to know if somebody's faithful to you, if somebody's a faithful friend, if they tell people about one little thing that you did, a little secret, they're going to tell people about the big. If they're unfaithful in something small, they're going to be unfaithful in the much. That's how God measures us. And he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in the much. Therefore, you have not been faithful in the righteous, if you have not been faithful in the righteous mammon, which is money, who will commit to you your your uh commit your trust the true riches so if you've not been faithful to god with your money right to give out of how much he gives you right if you're not faithful to give to his kingdom then you know it, it, maybe it's an orphanage god's putting on your heart maybe you know who whatever it is that the lord is putting on your heart or helping a brother or sister in christ with finances if you're not faithful with that, how how are you thinking that God's going to bless your business startup? How do you think that God's going to bless, you know, uh, your finances and help you with a new job? You're not even faithful to him with your money, right? In the little. And people say, oh, if I had a million dollars, I would give to God, like, all of it. You know, I would, I would donate so much. Well, if you're not faithful even with the little that you're having, that you have, you're not willing to give. You're showing God you're not faithful in the much. You're not going to get that. So that's a little tangent, but the point is, is that God, when you don't listen to God and the little requests that he asks of you, hey, delete Instagram for a while. I need you to focus on me. If you're not faithful to listen to him in those little requests, he's not going to speak to you the big ones, right? John three twelve to 14, it says, Jesus says, and he has this conversation with the Pharisee, he says, if I have told you earthly things and you believe me not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things so he's trying to tell he's, he's talking to him about you know being born again and what that means and what that looks like and that you can't enter heaven unless you're born again and the pharisee's not understanding you know he's a teacher of the law and so but but god is like if you're not believing jesus and like you're not believing me about the earthly things that i teach how are you going to believe me about the heavenly things right these deeper truths so isaiah 59 1 to 2 listen 
The Lord's arm is not too weak to save you, nor is his ear too deaf to hear you call. It's your sins that have cut you off from God. Because of your sins, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. So <clears throat> I find that when I'm obedient in the small request, he begins to speak on more things. And when I'm obedient to put into practice his written word, he begins to speak to me more clearly. Okay? We want to hear from God and we become prophecy junkies. I was one of them where we go from kingdom spouse prophet to king or whatever prophet on YouTube about, hey, and you look at all of their videos and it's always a word that tickles the ears. It's always, oh, you're, you're about to get promoted. Oh, what God's going to do in your life is going to make them jealous. Oh, your ex is spying on you. Oh, it's all these vain things. It's all about worship of self. You have to discern these things, right? And we have to be careful with who we're listening to. But you know, we, we want to hear so much from other people and from prophets, but we don't want to hear, we, we don't understand. God speaks to us directly and he speaks to us in his word. And if we don't believe his word, okay, this is him. This is him speaking. If we don't believe this, how are we going to believe when he speaks to us in our heart? We're not. Another reason why we, we don't hear from the Lord, we don't hear his voice clearly is we reject his word. Okay, we want to hear God's voice, but we disagree with his word. We say, well, I believe in Jesus, but I don't agree with everything the Bible says. Well, Jesus is the word of God made flesh. And if you deny, if you reject his word, you reject him. Right? He is his word. You know, his words will never pass away. And so we cannot, you know, if, if we're saying, yeah, I, I believe in the Bible, I believe in Jesus, but I don't believe, like I've said many times before, the homosexuality is a sin, that abortion is a sin, that da 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 da, then we're not believing Jesus. We're denying him. And if we deny him before a man, we, we, we will be denied by him in front of his, his father's angels, right? Another reason why we don't, we don't hear very clearly the voice of the Lord, we don't recognize it, is we have circumcised ears. Now, what does that mean? We want God to speak to us, but we have circumcised ears. Jeremiah 6, 10, to whom shall I speak? God is saying this, to whom shall I speak and give a warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Another, another uh, version says, to whom can I speak and give warning? Who will listen to me? Their ears are closed so they cannot hear. The word of the Lord is offensive to them. They find no pleasure in it. God is like, I can't, you know, I, 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 if I speak, you're not going to hear me. Because you close your ears, your ears are uncircumcised because you hate the word. You reject the word. You find no pleasure in the word. It's offensive to you, right? So what is circumcision? Circumcision is cutting the flesh off of male genitalia, right? And we, we hear in the Old Testament a lot about, in the New Testament, about how uh, the Jews oftentimes had uncircumcised hearts. So uncircumcised means that the flesh has not been cut off. So when we have an uncircumcised ear right? Uh, it's, it's because it's covered with flesh. The flesh is always at enmity with God. The carnal mind is always at enmity with God. It's always fighting against God. It wants its own pleasures. It wants to rebel against God. The flesh shuts out God's voice in your life and it seeks to do its own pleasures. And it will not hear God's voice because the flesh hates God's word, God's presence, God's commandments, God's wisdom. It wants to go its own way. And an uncircumcised ear loves to look for those teachers that tickle the ears, that appease the flesh, that say no harm will come, peace, peace. But those are false prophets, those are false teachers that don't warn of the consequences of sin and rebellion. And so... You know, we need to cut off the flesh. We need to recognize and be self-evaluating. We need to be people of growth. 
we are not spiritually mature. And I was very spiritually mature for so long because I would not take correction. I would not look within myself and say, wow, I'm actually, I'm going to church. I'm reading the Bible. I'm spending time with God. But here I am gossiping, criticizing, judging, not honoring my mother and father. Uh, you know, having horrible spending habits and literally being selfish and not even, you know, thinking of the poor and the needy or whatever people around me that need help. I had all of this sin in my life. I had envy. You know, so we have to look within ourselves and see, wow, I need to change. Somebody comes to us and says, man, you're being prideful. We say, oh, whatever, you know, and we don't want to listen to that. Well, we should take it before the Lord and say, Lord, am I being prideful? That is spiritual maturity. That is a person that's going to grow in God, that's going to advance in the kingdom, that is going to do great things for the, for the people of God. Another reason why we don't hear the voice of the Lord is we don't acknowledge him. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 3, 6, in all your ways, all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. If you want to hear the voice of the Lord, acknowledge him. God has an opinion on everything that you do and he will speak into the things that you bring to him, right? God has a say in everything. So it takes humility to pray. A lot of people are like, well, I just, you know, and they, and they, and they, they say, I just thank God all the time because, you know, I don't need to pray and ask him for things. I have everything I need. I'm very thankful. It's this false humility of, I just say thank you to God because I don't need to pray. I don't need to ask him. Well, actually it takes more humility to ask for help than it does not to because you're depending on God. People like that are just uh, masquerading um, themselves wanting to be their own gods and do their own thing and not acknowledge God. And they think, I, I don't need God. I got it all together. I don't need to ask him for anything. Yes, we do. We literally need God. We need God every second that we have a breath in our lungs. We need him. And the, when you pray about something, you're going to see God's hand in that something. You want to see God's hand move in more areas of your life? Start praying about those areas in your life. You want, you want God to, to give you instruction on these things? Bring God into the situation. You know, prayer, it takes humility to pray. It takes strength to pray. And it takes discipline to pray. And it takes perseverance because the enemy, the minute you start praying, the devil goes on attack mode. Because you're entering spiritual warfare. And so we want to hear the voice of the Lord. I'm telling you, sometimes I hear the voice of the Lord speak and he's, he's like a father. He's like, you know, sometimes you're, you're walking out of your house, right? And all of a sudden you're like, you're thinking, you're looking at that lint roller, right? You're like, I'll never need that, you know, whatever. And, and then you have that thought, maybe I need it today. Nah, I don't need it. And then you walk out and you end up needing it that day. And it's because God was literally saying, hey, you know, you need it. God, God, we think God doesn't speak about those little things. God cares about everything. God is like a father. He's like, don't forget your sweater. God speaks all the time. We just don't listen. God speaks through dreams and we don't listen. God speaks through circumstances, you know. We've been dating this person. This person is leading us away from God. This person is gaslighting us. This person is, uh, you know, not wanting, not on the same page with us regarding the things of God, insulting our relationship with God, saying that we're too religious because we don't want to listen to worldly music or whatever. Guys, who you marry is going to be so important, will make or break so many things. Don't settle because you're, you're lonely. Listen to the circumstances. God speaks through circumstances. So God speaks in many ways. I know that this was a little more firm, but I'm telling you, this is not out of judgment for anybody. I am myself guilty of not hearing the voice of the Lord for these reasons. So God is speaking to you 
God speaks to you all the time and you do not need a prophet to hear the voice of the Lord because you don't need to go to the manager, honey, when you can go straight to the CEO. You don't, the only mediator between God and man is Christ Jesus. That's it. So God wants to speak to you more than you want to hear from him, but you need to take the correct steps um, in order to have uncircumcised ears and uncircumcised hearts to receive his word and his voice.